All right, sale or exchange of rental property. For information on a figure on how to figure and report any gain or loss from the sale, exchange, or other dispositions of your rental property, see publication 544. So obviously when we're dealing with the rental property, we have the situation of trying to account for, you know, the depreciation on the rental property. Uh, how are we gonna do the, the, the Schedule E calculations, passive income and losses and that kind of stuff. And then when you sell the rental property, that becomes a big exercise in and of itself because because now you've got to deal with you know the depreciation on the rental property calculating the gain and everything on the rental property so specifically dealing with the sale you could dive into publication 544 sale of main home used as a rental property for information on how to figure and report any gain or loss from the sale or other disposition of your main home that you also used as rental property. So this gets, you can see publication 523. So now you're selling, you had your home, you used your home for rental property to some degree, and now you're selling it. That complicates things because if it was your main home and you didn't have the rental property, you might usually get this big exclusion to, of, of the gain and so that's usually a big tax benefit but if part of the home was used for rental property there could be an impact on the basis of the rental property what's the actual basis of the home now given the fact that uh, part of it was depreciated possibly for rental property and then and then you know thinking about this make this problem with the business versus personal use of the home and what that does with the possible exclusion for your principal residence all right, tax-free exchange of rental property occasionally used for personal purposes. If you meet certain qualifying use standards, you may qualify for a tax-free exchange, a like-kind exchange, or section 1031 exchange. So the 1031 exchange is kind of an issue in and of uh, itself. Uh, so you can dive into that one. Of one piece of rental property you own for a similar piece of rental property, even if you have used the rental property for personal purposes. So if you're thinking about, you know, changing things up, then that's when you, you might think about diving into more the details to qualify for a 1031 exchange so that you basically, the general idea is that you can kind of defer the gain, uh, uh, the, the gain rather than selling a rental property realizing a gain because obviously when you're dealing with the rental property if you're saying i'm i'm going to go from this rental property and then i'm going to have another rental property or something uh like that if you had to sell the rental property and realize the gain you could have a significant amount of gain at that time because you might have held on to that rental property for a long time and because the dollar amount is just large in and of itself which could mean that you have a significant tax consequence uh, and the tax consequence could be, you know, somewhat you can think kind of like, well, in any case, you could have a significant tax consequence, which could make it difficult for transactions to happen where, where basically you, you want to go from one rental property and then to another rental. It kind of gets you stuck. And, and so the idea would be, well, if you can have an exchange situation, it allows the, the market to, to flow more. Uh, without the taxes because taxes always throw kind of a wrench into the into the situation so that they can basically defer uh, the gain to some degree given the rules of the 1031 exchange and and allocate the basis of the property to the new property that they are selling that they are buying and then realize the gain when they sell uh, the, pro the the second property so that could be a whole nother course in and of itself that we've been thinking about doing. We might do it a future time. But for now, for more information on the qualifying use standards, see Revenue Procedure 2008-16, 2008-10, IRB 547. For more information on like-kind exchanges, you can see Chapter 1 of Publication 544, which you can find on the IRS website.